then let's let's get started. So um, what I want to talk about is um, from the Internet of Things to a web of systems. So you probably know that all the companies out there, they have like their own term for the Internet of Things. So Cisco has the Internet of Everything, uh, GE has the Industrial Internet, and Siemens recently came up with the term of web of, uh, web of systems. And I think they all have some certain flavor to it and um, just want to uh, introduce and explain it a little bit. But among us, I think it's not so important whether you call it web of systems or industrial internet or whatever, but um, that's just the, the term I, I want to get established here. So the um, web of systems um, we see as a development which grew out of the internet, the World Wide Web, the Web 2.0, and then suddenly in the space of, um, of devices that can connect can get connected to each other based on, on web technologies and um, having the capability of connecting the real world uh, to the physical world. And um, this is a slide I'm borrowing from uh, Casalicio Associati, which I think shows nicely how the, how the Internet has, Internet of Things actually has grown. So that's also, as in the beginning, I explained my, my own history. I started with the, with the Auto ID Labs, which was mainly dealing with giving things and items a name or a number, a barcode number, an RFID number, so, so some unique name that you could distinguish one object from the other. And with this numbering, you already can do some things. So you can do in, in supply chain management, you can track and trace where things are from the manufacturer to the shelf. And that's, in a way, like the start to think about the Internet of Things. So give each item an address or an identifier. And then as, as we move on in the, in the development here, uh, we, can, we can get the world online, we can not only associate information with it, but also think about taking control um, of items and machines, then let things and items talk to each other. So not just going back from here to a central route, to a central node, but also having a more distributed way of how things are connected. And ultimately, um, what the goal of this development is that we also have some reasoning, some decision making, some processing in the edge rather than just in the in the cloud or in the network. And that's also where where uh, Siemens is positioning the, the web of systems. It's really about, as uh, Siemens is a, is a device company, like selling all kinds of electric devices, machines from, from trains till, till uh, turbines and, and healthcare uh, devices. It's really about how can we add additional value to the things that Siemens is selling. So how to um, yeah, ground the processing and the um, harvesting of data and the enriching of data in the devices and in the things. And um, yeah, this is about the term now that the Internet of Things in a way is like the basic technology which is built on internet protocols and web technologies. And now if we add that, what I just mentioned, like local intelligence, local analytics, interaction among these devices, also the capability of yeah, the notion of apps in quotation marks to be able to like um, after deployment to still install new functionality apps but not really apps in the way of as you have it on your phone because it will be much more specialized but in a way having the capability for certified vendors also to provide additional features once the devices have have been deployed. And then very interesting for Siemens and important for Siemens is to to incorporate the domain specific knowledge. So in addition to what um, IT um, companies like cloud providers or, or search machines or um, data analytics uh, companies can do, um, Siemens sees itself in the position of having a lot of domain knowledge in the different businesses of, of train, of, of energy generation, of, of smart grid, and having this vocabulary, having the standards that have been developed there over time to have that embedded in a machine accessible format, uh, semantics, uh, to add that and then reach at this, what we call the web of systems. So this is, this is kind of the, the setting of that. Now to um, picture that um, even a little bit more is that um, we probably can see different, different uh, levels of um, the yeah, majority of um, a web of system. So the simple case is that we have uh, devices that are just connected. So they have an IP address, these are sensors or, or machines, and then they feed data into, into a cloud. And that's also where we see a lot of startups today that provide these platforms that either provide additional hardware modules you could attach 
to machines companies like like Dequit or or Thingworks and many others here and then having this accessible in the cloud and then do some processing some learning some analytics there uh, the next step is to have um, smart systems so we also have um, some intelligence in the microcontrollers in the in the smart network here and we can we can add um, additional value by by this intelligence there then the third step is that these devices also can communicate among each other so if we have a system where we have a pump we have a flow sensor we have a temperature sensor and suddenly the the the, the flow sensor is recognizing that the pump is getting clogged it could to tell the pump to maybe increase the pressure to keep the flow going and this is an example where the decision is made locally so has different advantages you are not dependent on connectivity to the cloud might also have the disadvantage of um, that you have to have a way to manage these devices and also to provide updates uh, to that but that's an example of how we see how these interacting um, systems um, can provide value and ultimately the fourth step is like this app powered systems where we can enhance physical products by uh, providing additional features and, and, and services here. Now, um, just quickly that if you talk about things like in the, in the Siemens case, this means yeah like a cascade like um, like a fractal view on the world because the thing can be from a sensor to a machine to a building to an entire to an entire city in the end so things are not just atomic things but you also can have compounds and aggregates of that so that's really depending on the on the domain uh, we are looking at All right. So with that um, introduction, uh, I want to spend a few more words about the about the group that is, as I said, uh, as I said, just a block away from 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 you here. So um, we are a group of um, six researchers here. We are, I think, the only research group in Siemens that has its own website. But I was really fighting for that. That's uh, saying that if the name of our group is Web of Things, at least we should have a website. And <laughs> Finally, we were successful in having that. So there's some some more information about um, what we are doing here, and um, our core mission is to look at web technologies and semantic technologies and find a way of what I mentioned before, describing this domain-specific knowledge in an accessible format that, such that machines um, can share that. And besides that, we're also looking. Um, on um, emerging technologies like human robot modeling that's where we have a collaboration with UC Berkeley uh, we also work with a um, research group there on, on variable sensing so how can we use um, consumer sensors like these Fitbits and jawbones and that stuff um, in a medical context so that you get enabled to visit your doctor the doctor can access your, your data with your consent and can include that also into the assessment and the examinations that are happening at the, at the doctor's practice and it Activity streams, which is a communication framework, which I will uh, provide some more more details um, in the next slides. Yeah, so this is the, this is the setup. I think I already explained um, before we had the the slides up here. So our job is to support the different business units to help them to get their uh, devices uh, connected to provide consulting in um, how to apply web technologies to make things easier uh, to be quite frank that's also a challenge for us because business units they have like their way about how they have been doing business in the past and now for us as being like an innovator within the company um, it's like a continuous battle like the the regular innovators dilemma so how how can we um, get new innovations into the company uh, without disrupting the the running business so this is something we do through pilots and discussions and um, yeah, incremental introductions and um, then also hopefully having the success at some time to have prototypes that we're developing here also being appearing in, in some of the projects of, of Siemens. As I said, we're working together with, uh, with startups, uh, university groups, corporate research groups to, to achieve uh, that mission. And this is, um, this is a picture of also a vision we have. Uh, what we want to build is like a marketplace for production where the idea is that, um, that um, companies get enabled to specify a good they want to produce like 
I don't know, like like a pen or like like a case or something, and to have a um, description language where you can describe what you want to have, and then the different producers, companies, like on an, on an Amazon marketplace basically, can hand in their bits describing of which machinery they have available, which level of quality they can produce, um, which um, timeline they have, and of course also which price, which may be eco-efficiency and um, parameters like that, and then describe how they would uh, produce uh, this, this good, and then you could select from the, from the manufacturer which is like most in line with the goals that you have. So, so this is like, a, I would call it a moonshot. So this is not something we will have any, any time soon, but this is like to describe the vision what we are working towards too. So then um, I want to talk about some projects now more in, more specifically what we are, what we are doing. And maybe if that works, we have uh, produced a video which again shows like in a very dramatic and pictures way about um, what we want to achieve and the, after that I want to want to show you how we are um, approaching that so let's just see whether we get this 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 video working here So the sound apparently is not working. I don't know if there anything we have to to do to get to get sound here. But if not, we just we just we just we just skip it. So so um, the video is, is on YouTube anyway, and the and if you're interested in the this the slide uh, the link is is shown in the slides. So then let's just um, move move on here. Yeah, so what you, what you would have seen in the video is um, basically a few examples of um, how we um, see to um, connect the real world and, and, the, and the virtual world. So this is the example here I just mentioned about the healthcare um, project where we're looking for a way how to get different variable sensing devices that consumers have to get that connected to the workplace of the doctor and then also having the attention of the doctor directed towards the interesting events rather than browsing through the last years of data that the patient has accumulated. And also um, what, what the video um, shows is that the current process of how you plan a factory or how you plan a product in a manufacturing place is that um, today these are all sequential steps. So these are all acronyms for tools like CAD tools you use to design a product and the workflow in, in a factory. And these are all very sequential steps. And what we are looking at is like how we can connect these different steps so that also information is being transferred from one step to the other and so if you conduct a change later stage that this is also reflected in the earlier design tools um, this is um, the um, idea here now what what we want to achieve uh, is to come up with a vocabulary to come up with a language that allows us to have machines communicating across different layers so it's about that sensors can communicate with each other that um, sensors can communicate with the machine machines can communicate with each other and with the production line also the production lines can communicate with each other so that the sensor is really talking across these different layers here so so this is the the, the idea what we want to achieve and um, as I was telling you so um, from this vision now moving into practice how we want to achieve that so we have currently a prototype system uh, which is called um, ASPACE so ASPACE is an event-based uh, system where the um, different can different devices can um, inject their events describing their status and describing uh, what they're doing and um, then use this format um, to share information across these different layers as um, shown before and um, 
we have attached um, a filtering stage so that you can as a device also describe only two specific events which are in the in the focus of the device and then can be used to coordinate actions um, across these um, uh, devices so um, something like this i changed my, my state um, then if a device is interesting in, in, in that it can use that to change its property and the um, the platform is based on a standard which is currently developed um, in the W3C. So it's actually coming from um, social media platforms and it's um, being used for describing activities like user X has liked a page on Facebook, for example, or, or Google Plus and have a common format of, of describing these activities. And now we are adopting that for more general events, for example, saying new healthcare data has become available or the robot has picked up an object X. So to have a, a rather high level language that can be used to describe activities or actions um, in the terms of, of machines. And then we have this platform which is based on, on, on MongoDB that that allows you to consume this activity stream uh, events, uh, support um, publish subscribe patterns, and then also allow the clients to query and subscribe by a filtering mechanism to specific um, events there. Uh, we are currently uh, trying that out with a, with a couple of students. So we have um, a course uh, at the iSchool of, um, of UC Berkeley, where we have uh, four students groups that are developing applications on this platform. And um, if you are hitting this URL, you actually currently can see see which kind of events are being generated and um, are being used there. Uh, so the goal is now to um, test this uh, platform and then to apply it to um, a broad range of um, Siemens businesses and um, make a more flexible, sturdy and reusable way of, um, of uh, sharing data across machines. Yes? It's, it's a web protocol, so it's really on the application layer. So it's really sitting on top of like all what you mentioned. Yeah. And how do these devices typically be Wi-Fi or Yeah, right. I mean, anything what is, what is there, what, what is being used. I mean, on the, like on the shop floor in, in factories, you have Wi-Fi or, your, or Siemens has something like, which is called Profinet. So this is an industry version of, um, of Wi-Fi. Um, and this is um, like, a, like a guaranteed quality of service with, with, enough, with enough time slots to really guarantee that the events are uh, arriving in, in real time and they don't have effects as you have on the regular internet. But we are just sitting on top of that. Yeah. Could you, will you talk a little bit about how, how time makes an appearance in, in the protocol and, and, and space, perhaps place? Uh, for instance, are, are timestamps provided? Yes, time timestamps are provided, uh, but to be clear, so this this is based on on web technology. So we have kind of a a web real time. So this is not for controlling a robot in real time. This is this is rather about coordinating activities among machines. Like the robot could say, "I picked up the object," but it's not about controlling a self-driving car through these um, activity streams. So we are really looking more on, on high-level events, saying that the car has arrived at that place. Now, whether this is coming a few milliseconds earlier or later, that shouldn't, that shouldn't really matter. But this is not something for, for streaming of data. So this is really, you could call it like a Twitter of machines to kind of coordinate uh, activities between machines. Yes? Uh, you mentioned that the goal is to support the ability to a broad range of uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. It seems like this only targets at those high-level events rather than the general, let's say, uh, data collection, right? This is not where the data got shipped to the storage. So can you comment on that over the goal of a wide or broad range? Well, broad range of applications, I mean, that, that, for example, if you have a building and you have, let's say, um, an energy management system, system there, which helps you to conserve energy and control the heating and control the lights there. And on the other hand, you also may have like an emergency system that in case of a fire helps you to like show the, the emergency exits on different screens and, and, uh, and uh, digital signage that's there. Now, um, in order to have these two systems today, you probably 
would have to install as its different domains like digital signage and fire alarm sensors and temperature sensors maybe twice for each of the application. Now what we want to achieve that you would have like all the infrastructure maybe just once but then having the protocols that help you to translate from the emergency domain to the building management domain and having like this language we're developing here that can be used as a um, as a transport layer to translate between these two applications. Because both applications, they have their legacy, there are standards, there's, there's vocabulary, but Edis has grown from different directions. There is like no commonality in there. And we see that as a layer to, to use that. So what we really want to do, what we, we want to achieve is like having mesh ups across, across different domains, like a high level language of bringing applications together. So, this is this is not a language which which you can use for anything. So what what I um, mean here by different use cases that it works across across use cases. Okay. So to maybe illustrate a little bit more how that actually could look like is that if we have like a robot, we have a conveyor belt, and we have like a cloud, like a system. Um, what we could have here is that, that the robot is asking, well, is there anything I can, I can do? And then there is um, an order or a job coming in from the IT system, from the cloud, saying, well, there's a few pending orders for car doors. And then um, there is the conveyor belt selling, well, I have the order 12 that you actually asked me to fulfill earlier. I have that ready, so you, can, you actually can d dispatch that. And um, then the robots, for example, can jump in and can say, well, I, I can help in doing that. So this is something I can do based on the capabilities I have, based on the job that's here. So this, this is how coordination here could actually work. And uh, with this in place, what we can do now is we can embed the semantic functional service description uh, in the device so that the devices have self-awareness of their capabilities and then are um, able to describe um, what they can do, what they can offer, and also can describe the API to the other machines about how they can, how they can work together and how they, how they can be used. So um, given coordinates in my workplace, I can pick up an object at that location. So this is um, how that could look like in an example here. Now how that could be modeled is that we could use some, some precondition and then execute a service request um, based on a post condition. And then we can put that into um, a semantic reasoner and then um, this service can be chained and, and executed. So that this formats are being shared, then we have a semantic reasoner that is uh, processing these requests and then can feedback what are the devices that are available here and how could they be chained together and could be executed in order to achieve the configuration um, of this in environment here. So just, just the example here that we have the, the service request here, then the reasoner is like finding out what do we have here in the environment and then provides the execution plan like in which sequence uh, these uh, devices um, can, can work together. So in that sense uh, we can establish um, machine uh, to machine collaboration but we are also interested in um, how like a machine can then react uh, to the environment or also could react to a human robot collaboration. So thinking about a task that Parts of the task can be executed by a machine and parts of it could be executed um, by a robot. So that's also another project we are uh, currently working on. So this is how that would look like now in, based on, on web technologies, how this could be executed. And um, based on this description the devices have and the service requests uh, that the um, order here uh, can be fulfilled. So now the, the goal of this um, AS base project is to have the integration of these different data sources and algorithms. And the example we have here from healthcare is that we have this different variable sensors I mentioned before uh, can be used at the doctor's place. And then um, the doctor doesn't have to worry about whether this is a Nike fuel band or whether this is a Fitbit or uh, whether this is a jawbone, but that we have like in the background the integration of it and we just have then the, the heart rate data that which is coming from whatever device that's available and then have 
a visualization tool where the doctor can look at the data and also get some highlights about where are the interesting events that have happened instead of just looking at the raw stream um, of the data. And the idea is that to use the very same system I have um, just sketched for, for healthcare that also could be used, for example, for industrial maintenance of, of machines. So that if you have a wind turbine, uh, you also would have a couple of sensors that could be integrated and then could be used to find out uh, about the performance or about um, the well-being of, of a machine. And using this as an integration layer to have um, different sensors that are out in the field um, integrated there. Now, um, getting closer to the end of my talk and then also um, allowing some more time for um, discussion with you, um, what I have uh, presented so far is an semantically enriched events brokerage. So this is this AES space that we are currently developing and, and testing. So what we, what we are doing is having this, um, this format that helps to coordinate across machines, but also um, should help the machines to find out um, what is actually relevant for me, what, I, what can I do here? And then having this brokerage service that by the semantic descriptions that the machine is getting suggestions to what it could subscribe to. So which events are actually relevant for this machines, all the events that are getting into this pool, which we are currently look, which you currently can look at uh, at this URL I have um, presented earlier. And then also um, having some uh, disambiguation about, for example, um, units here. So that um, if the robot is interested in weight, so there might be different denominations um, about how weight can be um, represented here. And we want to build upon like um, ontologies like the, um, the, what is the ontology called? don't get the name currently now, but there are ontologies out there which we are reusing, we are not reinventing that. So we are building upon ontologies that are out there and then can use that to disambiguate and translate from one unit into the other. And this is just an example of, of um, how we also want to describe um, vocabulary that's like in the example of the um, of the um, energy um, system and the evacuation system, like vocabulary and steps that have been described there to integrate that through ontologies and then help machines to reason about and understand what that means. So bring that into, into one picture now that we have uh, events that are occurring, that are generated by um, different um, machines and services and then can be consumed by different machines of service and services. Then we see the way of this disambiguation service, like the example with the different units, that um, there's, e there's an event coming in in kilograms, then it can be processed and can, can be maybe fit back into, um, into pounds, like as an easy example, uh, or also disambiguate between there's a Fitbit reporting that you have been cycling, uh, but there's another um, application that only un understands, for example, mountain biking and then have a disambiguation service that helps to translate and say, well, this is actually the same event, it's just in another format. So this is what we, what we are picturing here. And then also having this uh, subscription service that tells a machine um, by reasoning which are the important events that are relevant um, and that you should subscribe to in order to provide the, the feedback here. Now, um, what we described is um, a lightweight event um, tracking um, system. So um, probably still far away from this marketplace I was um, explaining as, um, as a moonshot, as a vision we want to achieve. But we see that as a first step um, to help to coordinate across uh, different uh, domains. Then to have the semantic integration um, for information heavy tasks such as um, disambiguation of, of different uh, meanings. Then um, having that domain agnostic and um, using the system now in future demonstrations for um, greater complexity in semantic relationships, as I said, these units are just one example of um, how to present that. And we are interested in vertical integration of um, uh, different applications and uh, domains there. 
Now this is, um, I think, to the question earlier about where we, where we see ourselves sitting there. So this is really on the application layer. So there is some low-level communication protocols in between. But then having um, a semantic description to add more meaning to um, how machines can collaborate and can communicate with each other. Now, as the last slides, um, I just want to pose some research questions we are generally interested in. So I just showed you the current approach that we are following and we are using. And we are always interested in um, working with research groups, um, other researchers to, to see, well, where are the flaws, the limitations about uh, what we are doing, but also what are alternative approaches. So how can we manage smart things? How can we describe their, their needs and characteristics? So we are currently using these activity streams as an example, but Maybe there's, maybe there's other approaches. Maybe there's more appropriate approaches for specific domains. How can we, how can we establish collaboration among uh, devices? Um, then how can we describe the data for this plug and automate functionality so that you, if you have like a configured system and you bring a new robot in, how can we get to the notion of how we take our USB stick today, plug it in, it finds its driver and it works. How can we apply that also to physical systems um, and machines? How can we integrate vertical standards, like the example of the um, energy management system and the uh, emergency evacuation system? So how can we integrate these different standards and yet can get across these um, domains? And then how can we also get more processing, more intelligence on the device? So what's the trade-off? When is it like something which should be done locally, when should it be done in the cloud, and how can we also move uh, between this, because ultimately it's probably um, a combination of both. But how can we um, have a system that can run autonomously without a cloud, but then still, if the cloud is available, also receive updates and maybe can be supplied with new algorithms of, of processing the data there. So this is just, um, just an idea, like a landscape of, of research questions that uh, we're interested in. And with that, um, I just uh, want to close and open the floor for, for questions, comments, and ideas. Thank you very much. Questions? I have one question. Sure. Uh, about, uh, I'm wondering how close you are to deploying to applications, or how close you are to research. So, for example, in Siemens, what field of applications you see, do you see as the most promising, uh, for example, industrial automation or automotive or health? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have uh, pilots or something in some of these fields? Right, okay. So. So uh, how the group is set up and why we came here and as we work with universities, we are probably further away from, from products than other groups in Siemens. So we are definitely more on the research side. So our perspective is to look at the next five or, or ten years. That's kind of the time horizon uh, we, are uh, we, are, we are looking at. Then, however, of course, it's always our mission that we also can like, sell or get pilots that we build our own to get that into business units that use that to adapt that more to their domain, not yet on a product level, but on a, on a pilot. And then if they like it, they later can take it on and maybe implement a product out of it. Now to your question about which fields uh, we see applicable. So there's also different answers to that. So from, from a technical perspective, uh, it's definitely, as the examples I showed, it's, it's healthcare, it's, it's manufacturing, like manufacturing, industrial manufacturing, um, smart grids, um, mobility, so everything which has to do with coordination of, of traffic. So that's the, like the, the topic perspective. And then it really depends on the willingness of like the Siemens business units to adopt new technologies. And that's that's another story then. So, for example, healthcare is, um, is very regulated and is very restrictive. So even though that we maybe build a prototype and that somehow makes sense and is convincing, um, there might be other factors like regulation which, which, which might be higher barriers to actually get that into a product. I'm, I'm asking that because, you know, we are also working on this field. And, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you look at the, what people say at literature, 
it seems that you know in the near future there would be say 50 billion devices, one trillion devices. Right. Okay. Yep. And and then and then on the contrary you see a lot of obstacles to the actual uh, diffusion. To mm -hmm. Okay. And so probably uh, developing pilots uh, is is uh, is important because. Uh, uh, there is a gap between what True. seems to be the future and uh, and what the future will be. <laughs> true. So. True. 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 O on the other hand. I Connecting devices is nothing new. So, so all the factories today they have their machines connected somehow. Just it's not on web technologies. It's not something which is very accessible. It's like very domain specific. So that's all in silos. Now, in order to have um, more leverage out of that, we are trying to like translate this very domain specific knowledge into something broader, something more accessible. So with that, we also could then connect across these domains. So what I'm saying is it's not about starting from scratch. It's not about we have to we have to start connecting the devices. They are connected. It's more about what's the communication layer that they also can really talk to each other. And so um, I think that's just something how evolution works. It works in islands and very domain specific um, approaches and then at some stage later there's some vertical integration happening. Are, are you guys um, partners in the Digital Manufacturing and Design Institute? Yes, DMDI. Yeah. yeah. So going to your question, um, you know there's some talk about DMDI actually hosting sort of a, a cyber infrastructure for manufacturing research right, that actually serves as sort of a, an open platform on which kind of new technologies can be developed and it's sort of advancing the notion that in fact at a higher level mm -hmm. if you have a generalizable model um, you actually provide the opportunity for more innovation all around. Right, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so there's some efforts to do that, um, although um, I think it's very difficult because in something like DMDI, there's a large number of manufacturing company partners, and so getting consensus on what kind of test bed to provide that allows sort of right. more future-looking research it is tough. Right, and there's not just that. I mean, there's also the IIC, the Industrial Internet Consortium, which is also looking in, in, into test beds. There's the OIC. Um, there is this um, industry uh, 4.0 in Germany, like this national platform, which is kind of getting slowly um, but most ahead. Of the ones except DMDI are very uh, corporate focused, right? So they're much more focused on standards. And yeah, sure. Whereas I, I don't actually know if I'm correct in this, Florence, so please correct me if I'm not. I thought DMDI also was sort of because they had a larger number of university partners, was sort of focused more on the long term? Is that? Probably depends on whom you ask. So, um, uh, so there is also money coming from corporations and flowing into DMDI. Right. So, so I would assume it's, it definitely has a different flavor than if you are looking at some funds coming from, from research departments. So it definitely has a more application-oriented uh, flavor of it. So, I mean, the, the idea of the DMDI is to develop approaches about how to get manufacturing back to the U.S. So how, how, how to do that and um, how can we develop new automation approaches that um, justifies to have production happening here and creating more, more workforce here again in, this, in these domains. My question. Maybe there are other questions. No. Probably, I mean, in my opinion, there are some abstractions, for example, the event abstraction, which are common to a lot of the of uh, environments, application environments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, in my opinion, there are several domain specific issues. For example, if you go to the automotive domain, yeah, which is one of the application domains in which this stuff, right. of course, is, can be used. If you go there, you find a lot of uh, specific issues that uh, 
are different from the ones that you find, for example, in the health system. Right. Okay. And, uh, and so on one side you have these abstractions, right. which can, you can use everywhere. Mm -hmm. And on the other side you have these domain specific issues, which probably are the ones that uh, are the main obstacle to the actual deployment of these technologies uh, in, uh, in the real world. So this is, uh, and that's the reason why I was, I, was ask, I was asking whether you have pilots, because when you have a pilot, uh, you basically learn a lot on that specific application domain. Right. I mean, that's that's the goal. So what, what I present is really very, very young and fresh. So we started basically working on that like um, end, end of last year. And we're developing like this framework, which we're now testing with students. And the next step would exactly what you're saying. So how can this AS space, so how would that work in like a car manufacturing environment? So what is really the vocabulary? What is really the language? What should be the events? that make sense in this environment and then what's an ontology that could be used as um as like a like a reference as um as, as like a reference book where you can look up the meaning of, of that and then if you have I don't know a worker that's working in this space and we want to we want to increase his workplace safety to derive how we get into healthcare, which are the important parameters to measure which sensors could be used to measure that and that's how we, for example, where we could connect like healthcare and like this industrial environment. But a lot of stuff has to be built in order to, to, to get the abstractions that then actually can be matched because it's definitely not the specifics that, that you are mentioning. Yeah. So one of the key tools that you use is, is uh, ontological expression mm -hmm. and, and tools that, that are well recognized on, on what's called the, the computational side of things. When, when you start looking for partners, is there a, an appreciation of, of the value of that, at, at least from the point of view of mastering descriptions of large numbers of, of potential components or some some angle, or do you have to sell you have to sell the ontological approach as well um, to to a potential partner? What, what do you mean? You, you mean like partner to develop that, or you mean partner later when that would be developed? Partner during to, to field a prototype, uh, to, to do a pilot study, uh, or, or do you find the, the value of an, of an ontology oh. the domain oh. is, is, is well understood yeah. and, and it's there, so you don't yeah. sell that? Uh, Yes, it's actually true. So, so um, to to my to my surprise, actually, when I started in Siemens, I was really surprised about how many groups within Siemens are actually working on ontology. So that's something which is pretty established there. So also due to like the German groups have been working a lot with the German Institute of uh, of Intelligence, the DFKI, which is like a leading institute in in Germany and probably also in the world on on, on semantic technologies. So um, that concept is understood. Uh, however, it has been more used for like semantic search and for databases than as we are trying here than to bring that onto embedded devices. So it's I would say like a second wave of of, of semantic technologies, but the semantic technologies as such, they are known. It's just we are like reviving them and thinking about how can we shrink the footprint in order to bring that um, on the device level. So perhaps also to, to have the notion of process be included within? Yeah, to have like a reasoner which used to run on a machine, how can we build a reasoner uh, using um, maybe binary data formats of RDF to run that on a node, on a microcontroller, so. Good. Well, let's see, thanks again. To sure. For a great presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs>